In this video I will go through some exercise showing you how you can explore your data and not the least how you can cure your data because you may have some errors in there and you want to avoid them or to mend them. This is what I call curing. So I'll go through the simple plot inspections in once more. It's been done in a previous video but repetition doesn't hurt. I'll go through cross-cut inspections and then the curing by bridging and finally I will show illustrate what problems you might have with your um, uh, standard vials with escalating uh, leakage in, in standard vials which we have now essentially cured and I'll teach you how to handle that. My example in this case is an experiment uh, conducted by Yuan Gao in our laboratory and it's a starvation experiment and it's a demo set uh, and it is... I fiddle with it slightly just to illustrate uh, what might happen when you do an experiment and how you fix the, the problems. This is uh, an experiment with uh, uh, six replicate vials with a starved bradyar zobium inspecting what it, how it handles nitrite and N2O and nitrate under starvation conditions. Uh, so my first six vials are my replicate uh, replicates of the uh, cultured organism and then I have a high standard and a low standard and a nitric oxide standard. I've already cured the de, uh, the de kin calc by by setting the uh, approximate uh, leakage and calibrated all the gases, so we don't go, go through that now. So, in order to inspect my data and to have a quick look through your experiment, you go to sl to um, to the master spreadsheet, and the first thing you do is to make a uh, a simple plot graph it's already here but I will show how to make it and it will be a little bit of a repetition but it doesn't hurt uh, so I mark the whole simple plot sheet and insert an XY graph and you can see that what has happened here is that the N2O by make sure that you get the titles on top that you mark the whole whole uh, um, matrix uh, including the titles so that you could get the titles down here so you can see what's what's going on what the different curves are so you can see that the bacteria have taken down N2O uh, fairly fast they produce nitric oxide which is then depleting and then they produce nitric oxide again uh, it's a bit of a complicated history but uh, the short version of it is, uh, is that they use both N2O and nitrite first but because they're equipped with NAP they don't take nitrate before they've depleted the other electron acceptors and then they produce N2 from, from nitrate but the N2 curve here is declining because the production is so low that the loss by sampling is higher than the production rate and we're not so interested in the measured N2, but we can switch to plotting the accumulated N2, which is the true N2 production estimated by the gas data. So we click on the, on this, uh, sorry, we click on this one again, and we drag this over to have the accumulated N2. And now you see that they produce uh, actually a certain amount of N2 after depleting the N2O and the nitrite. So this will be your your inspection window and you can copy this one and move to the left here and paste it in here. You can even make sure that you get the title if you click on the chart title and write equal and then you mark this square and you get the title now that's not so interesting in this experiment because they all have the same title but if you have different titles you will see on the, 
on the window the treatment that you're looking at. And now you can go through the different treatments. Two look slightly different, but not dramatically different. Three, four, and five, and six. Now in six there is a problem, and we will deal deal with that a moment in a moment. But I'll just teach you one uh, other thing, one other way to inspect your data fast. Is if we go back to one and say that we want to compare all the vials with respect to N2O. See how they take down N2O. So we could say that I want to make a table with my N2O in micromol N per vial in column AZ. Uh, and I want to plot all of them. So I go to crosscuts. And in crosscuts, you extract the data from the different vials. You have a common time scale here, taken from number one. And then you have the, um, you determine which column you're taking it from by writing the column name in, uh, in D11. Now, if you go back to one again, what we wanted to look at was the micromole of N2N per vial, which is in column A set. So we go back to crosscuts, and I plot it to write A set here. And then all of a sudden you see the, the curves. This is the plot of the, of the different, uh, different um, uh, vials. So you see all the vials plotted in the same plot and you can go to to another column you just switch from say that I want to see how quickly they use the remaining oxygen. There is always a little bit of oxygen to begin with even if we intend to make it anaerobic there is 1.6 micromole of oxygen to begin with in this case. So we can plot a column AX And it looks um, quite nice. They deplete the oxygen within the first five hours, and then we have almost zero oxygen at the end. Now I've moved back to the uh, master plot again and uh, tried to see what we can do with number six because there was obviously something funny going on after 11 hours. Uh, all of a sudden the N2 disappears, the N2O disappears, and if we look at the oxygen uh, curve, it also looks a little bit funny. Um, this is the oxygen signal, and this is how it looks. If I plot the oxygen signal, I get something like this. There's something funny happening here, uh, and that is applies to all the gases. N2O disappeared and even N2 disappeared. So what happened here was that the needle was clogged by rubber. That happens from time to time. You may also have similar problems if you have an integration problem, although it's uh, a, a, an automatic system which should function the same way all the time. Sometimes you get errors. You might try to fix it by reintegration, integrating your peaks. But if it is due to a clogged needle and you lost the measurement, you have to do something about it. And what we do is to say that, OK, I don't believe that my N2 disappeared, but I have the best estimate I have of the N2 concentration in this this cell is the uh, average of the foregoing measurement and the next measurement and divide that by 2. 
and all of a sudden I've fixed the N2 curve. I mark this red to remember what I've been doing. And we see that we have the same problem throughout here with all the gases because the needle was clogged, there was only a marginal amount of gas ejected. So what we can do now is to take this cell and we simply paste it into all of them. And now we've basically fixed it and all of them are, are, are have reasonable numbers. CO2 is not interesting in this case because we ignored CO2. Um, so, uh, and remember that when you do this, uh, you still retain the original numbers in the raw data, um, uh, your raw data sheet, so you don't lose the information about the original value, but you fix it in order to calculate the uh, reasonable rates and reasonable accumulated values. And that's absolutely necessary uh, for, for a calculation. The alternative to doing this is to delete the entire row in your raw data set and then paste them in again, which is, uh, uh, takes some time, but it's doable. The calculations will still um, be correct, and, but you will ignore this data point. The final thing that I want to show in this video is uh, the, a problem that we have encountered in some of our experiments, and that is the has to do about leakage. Uh, and this particular experiment is very illustrating. Now I've cured my data set. Um, um, before I started now, I cured my data set, setting the right leakage of nitrogen and oxygen and the injection volume. So if I go to just to inspect that I've done this right, um, if I was a supervisor, I would go to my low standard, that's air. Uh, so that contains a lot of oxygen and nitrogen. And I should have essentially flat curves in the two green columns. Uh, which I do have. So that means that my my um, volume, my injection volume has been, been set right. If I want to inspect them in more detail, I can form a, set this to the secondary axis and we get a different scaling and you see that the the two uh, the two variables in in the air sample is, is okay. Now the problem uh, we have encountered in some cases is that they, if we look at the uh, high standard they both look nice to begin with, they're both flat and then towards uh, after 24 injections these two uh, peaks start to escalate. And if you have a situation like that, you should inspect the, um, your treatments and see, would I look at the amount of N2 uh, leakage into the control vial? And this, in this particular experiment, it was quite evident that this leakage, that was escalating leakage that we saw here, is uh, not the case for the vials with bacteria, because I would see it that, uh, as an escalating uh, nitrogen production. So what we have discovered recently is that uh, this can happen in, in dry, empty, standard vials, uh, because they lack water. If we concentrate on the first part of this uh, um, these curves, they look actually quite nice. So what we can, oh sorry, insert and then x 
flaps like this. So what I've done is that I've essentially stabilized the first by the leakage of oxygen and, uh, and nitrogen and then assume that the same leakage is uh, I have the same leakage throughout for, for my my um, uh, experimental vials. What the the advice here is to never use completely dry standard vials but inject anything between 0.1 and 1 milliliter of water into your standard vials and you avoid this problem. But as I told you the escalating N2 that you see here by inspecting my, my experimental vials uh, I would see that uh, I would have seen it. To convince you about that and to, to show you how you can inspect it, you can take your high standard, which has apparently a, a massive leak towards the end of the experiment. The spreadsheet is uh, cured based on making the graph horizontal during the first 17 samplings. And now I can use the uh, my spreadsheet here to calculate for vial number seven which is the high standard to calculate and I get a, a calculation of the apparent accumulation of N2 so I can make a plot of that I'll make this one and I'll take hold the control key down and make this graph here this is now my estimate of the leakage, accumulated leakage of N2 into my, my uh, empty vial. So I can copy this one over here because it's, I want to handle it over here. delete the other few so I can keep this one don't need this one anymore so this is now my accumulated and to leakage into vial 7 uh, and it's the unit is micromole N to N. So I took it from that column. Okay. Now I want to compare this uh, with the others. So if I copy this one and paste it as a an image, I have it retained. And now I can go to one of the other vials, number one, for instance, and here you see the accumulated N two production in vial number one and after 15 hours it levels off and increases only slightly so throughout the next um, 35 hours I've accumulated only approximately 10-15 um, micromole of N2. This title is no longer relevant because this is my vial one. right? Whereas in this case, since I pasted it as a window and now as a, as a figure, uh, as a, an image, it is retained. So the leakage that I had in my, um, my uh, standard took off and escalated throughout the samplings after 20 hours, amounting to on almost 45 micromoles of N2 whereas here you have a steady and constant much lower rate of N2 production. So at least what I can say in this case is that this leakage does not occur in this vial, otherwise this would, would have been escalating up here. It's not foolproof, but the best way, best way to avoid this is of course to have more than one uh, control vial with low initial concentrations of oxygen and nitrogen but also to include some water in the vials to avoid such escalating uh, uh, 
leakage. And if you have any old experiment where you have an escalating leakage in your control because you used a dry vial, uh, you should ignore the last part of it and concentrate on the first part of the experiment because that's when you get the relevant leakage rate for the system during that experiment. You must remember that the leakage of oxygen and nitrogen can vary from one experiment to the other depending on the wearing and tearing of the tubing and a number of other factors that may change the leakage and it changes from one robot to the other so there is no real default value here but it's absolutely crucial for calculation of, of the N2 production in any experiment.